Here with me in this interview, I'm speaking with Andy May. And uh, Andy, what do you do for Fluidyme, first of all? So I'm the uh, group leader of the uh, DNA sequencing sample preparation group in the research and development arm of the company. Now you're working uh, in this research and development area on some new uh, products for the company. And as I understand it, um, uh, this is uh, going to help researchers of, of any type that would be using your products uh, make some better decisions. So in order to kind of get to that point, why don't you first of all tell me uh, what it is you're currently working on, your, your primary main project. Absolutely. So we have, um, we currently have two product lines that we're working on here. One of them uh, is called Slingshot and it's a very accurate method of measuring concentrations of DNA samples. Um, the, the second product, which is the primary focus of my group at the moment, uh, is called the Access Array. And what that allows you to do is to generate, uh, it, it streamlines the preparation of uh, small regions of DNA for sequencing using the current generation of sequencing platforms. There's been a huge change in the technology used for DNA sequencing in recent years, um, and people are really looking for new ways and improved methods mm -hmm. for developing uh, for, for introducing samples into those those instruments, and that, that's really what my group's focused on. Now uh, we've mentioned uh, <coughs> the term next generation sequencing. Is that is that how we would describe what it is you're working on? So um, when the human genome was first sequenced, they used um, a method called that's commonly known as Sanger sequencing. Um, it was there was a set of of instrumentation that was developed by a number of companies. Um, that used uh, fairly straightforward mechanics to actually sequence the uh, to, to, to sequence stretches of DNA. Um, in recent years, there have been a, there's been a, a huge change in the technologies that are, are used for DNA sequencing, uh, and the the rate that at, at which people can uh, can measure sequence information has changed dramatically uh, by orders and orders of magnitude over the last five years. Um, there are there are leaders in that. Uh, 454, uh, Illumina, uh, Applied Biosystems each have instruments that can sequence the equivalent of an entire genome in the order of a week um, with equivalent accuracy to the original generation. And so people refer to these technologies now as next generation mm -hmm. sequences because mm -hmm. they came on, it's a little bit like Star Trek, you know, it's the, it's the next generation. That's um, right. <laughs> <so. clears throat> well, looking at what you're doing, how is... Um, is this going to uh, benefit, say, your existing customers that are already using your, you know, the, the Fluidyme system as we've referred to it? What does this take it to another step, and and, and what are the benefits that they'll get from that? Absolutely. So, um, so the Slingshot application is really a is an extension of um, of one of the existing chip platforms that we call the Digital Array. So this is something that we've used for a whole for a variety of different uh, applications in the genetic analysis field, um, and in the context of the next generation sequencing, what that is doing is allowing people to really um, so the, the the next generation sequences require accurate measurements of the concentration of your sample before you introduce them into the sequencer, um, and the slingshot system and application really provides the ultimate capability to do that. You can measure individual molecules in the solution. The access array is a bit of a change for us in terms of our technology um, in that uh, whereas our previous chips that have been used for genotyping and gene expression simply allow you to measure fluorescence coming out of wells in the chip, the access array allows you to carry out biochemical reactions inside the chip but then we've designed a series of, of microfluidic pumps into that uh, chip that allow you to recover those experiments from the chip and then do other things with them afterwards. So it's really a, it's really a shift for us in terms of our ability to, um, to enter into, to, to, to help people streamline their workflow. So whereas previously we were a measurement, it was, they were all measurement devices, now we're a, almost a production device. Um, so uh, it really changes the way what people can do. They can still take measurements from that chip, but there's now, now they've, once they've taken that measurement, they can then recover the material and push it into, for example, a second generation sequencer. 
So um, that, that's how it really extends from what we've done previously. Is, is how close are we to having this uh, new technology available, or, it, or is it already? So we have, um, we've done a number of proof of concept studies with, uh, with early access customers. Um, and those have been going very well. We've had some great data back. Um, we have, this quarter we've, uh, we've sold a number of systems. We sold a number of systems before the product was launched actually. Um, and uh, it's now on general release. It's out being sold by our sales force. Um, we have a number of, we've already positioned a number of systems this, uh, in the last couple of weeks actually. Uh, so it's really, it's right on the cusp of, of going out to the, to the, to the public. Well, I know in talking with uh, your, the founder of your company that he really sees what you're doing as having some great positive benefits to help people, and uh, you know, regardless of where they live, but maybe even a, especially in, in areas that might be climate challenged, let's say, uh, with new varieties of seed and things that right. would come out of a lot of this research being done. Uh, how would you s characterize uh, what you're working on, what we're talking about here, how is that going to uh, impact, ultimately, the ability to create some of these new um, products or, or which could be things like uh, uh, varieties of seeds or, or maybe genetics in uh, animals that are used for yep. food consumption? So that there, there are two ways it, can, it, it impacts that. There's currently a, uh, a fairly um, extensive effort in the agricultural community to sequence the genomes of agriculturally important crops and animals. Um, and what that really drives to is it allows people to understand the basic biology behind those crops themselves. But as you start to sequence more and more of those, those species, you're going to start to understand where the differences are in them. And so, uh, for example, there was a study just recently where uh, a group in England managed to, managed to sequence um, regions from a, an ancient barley which it, uh, had survived uh, had survived for thousands of years uh, while it was trying to be selected against and it survived in low in, in times of drought in large temperature fluctuation um, and what they're trying to do is use that information to um, to see whether to, 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 to try and apply that to, to existing crops to see if that's 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 useful um, so where we, we, where we fit into that is obviously there are thousands of, of possible genomes that could be sequenced, there are thousands of variants um, that, are, that, that need to be looked at. Um, and so again, the, the, the slingshot side of things really helps streamline that, that genome, uh, that genome uh, uh, sequencing process. What the access array does is a little twist on that. In the, once you know what the, the general regions are across a number of species that contain variants that may be of interest, what, that, what, what the access array allows you to do is then focus on those regions and sequence them from thousands and thousands of samples. So if, you, if for example, you were in a selection experiment and you were trying to find out whether a particular gene has changed during that selection process, what it will allow you to do is to look specifically at that region and find out what, what changes have taken place in the genetic code of that, um, of that plant or, or animal um, that have caused the, the, the change that, that you've been selecting for. Um, and that, that, that's, really what, that's really what it gets down to, is it allows you to focus on discovering what's important rather than, rather than looking at the whole organism across those thousands and thousands of, um, uh, of variants. So uh, it, it, it's really a question of focus, I think. Well, uh, I, I really appreciate the opportunity to learn about some of this new technology that you're working on, and, and I think uh, people would agree, you're very passionate about it, and, and it really helps to uh, have somebody so involved with that enthusiasm explain it uh, and give us a perspective of how this is going to be beneficial in this industry of, of agriculture that we're talking about. So that's Andy May here with Fluidime at the headquarters, and I'm Chuck Zimmerman reporting.